Right, we're back. Got this ground floor lit up nicely. And I changed my mind with the ladder by the front door there. I decided to go up the center instead. And we've got a second floor. I've already put down all the barrels and a lot of the tubing. Um, I've just put half slabs of wood over the entire roof so nothing can spawn up there and that gap is too small for a spider to come down so this house is pretty much safe now from mobs right so redstone tubes they are made using brass and you make brass with an alloy oven for which you need bricks so you need to smelt clay in an oven to get bricks put four in to get the brick blocks and then just a hollow box for the alloy furnace then you put one tin ingot and three copper ingots in the alloy furnace with some fuel and it'll make brass and then you just make a pneumatic tubing which is just brass either side of a glass then you uh, put that pneumatic tubing with redstone to make redstone tubing okay uh, not what I intended but anyway redstone tubing just pneumatic tube and redstone and we've just got it around the entire perimeter of the room we've got a little bit over two stacks of barrels here and then we have red alloy wire which is one iron ingot and four well actually you use um, red alloy to make this and you need three red alloy ingots to make the wire and each ingot is just alloy furnace four redstone one iron to get three of these and then you've got the red, red alloy wire then you get one more ingot and cover it with covers of any kind which is basically just a diamond hacksaw and any block just sliced with the handsaw above the block just over and over until you get the covers and you surround an ingot with that to get the jacketed wire now the timer it looks complicated but it's not really so to get stone wafers you just smelt stone and then you need these are the simplest you just put one redstone above one stone wafer to get a stone wire and you, you need three of those in that pattern stone wafers there then you have a stone anode which is three wafers four redstone you get three of those you only need two for a timer so you'll be left with one spare then you got stone cathode stone wafer and a redstone torch and a stone timer which is stone redstone torch stone wafer and then you just put them together in this pattern so anodes cathode at the bottom pointer in the middle wires there and wafers you get the timer now the timer when you're placing it on the floor you can't, I can't place it on this at the moment because it's uh, half slabs when you place it on the floor it's just simpler it points in the direction you're looking and the one that points towards you is a kind of safety feature you can put a redstone current to that one which I'll just show you which one I mean it's the one at the bottom so if a redstone coming in from the bottom of that will stop the timer working otherwise it'll just keep on going and going and any of the other three sides will take a pulse as the pointer reaches that by there and if you right click on it you can change how quickly it pulses and when you're placing it on a wall if you move the, the pointer towards the side you want it to face it should face that one it worked before, I don't know why it isn't now. I think maybe because of this. No. Oh well, never mind. 
just to move it all you need to do is make a screwdriver which is a stick in this one and a ironing gut in this one simple right so now we want a filter filter are as, uh, filters are reasonably easy to make you just need a piston cobblestone two gold and a red doped wafer now for this you need to make a silicon ball which is just eight sand and eight coal in an alloy furnace and then you use the handsaw any type of handsaw I think no it has to be diamond sorry diamond handsaw with the silicon ball to get these silicon wafers then just one of those with four redstone makes a red red doped wafer and you use that for a filter and you want it so that that face is pointing towards your inventory you sucking items out of and it will always have the smallest opening on the back and then I have the ender chest so anything that goes into that ender chest will be sucked out from using the, with the filter and be, you can make the filter take out specific items by putting one of that item anywhere in here if you put more than one in then it will only take out that amount so if you wanted you could have it taking out just full stacks of something and you can do nine different items and you can color code for various sorting options that's a bit I've never actually done that yet I've not ha actually had a system that well developed yet so having uh, this ender pouch and that ender chest they are now linked so I'm going to go back to the house and we'll start putting stuff in and you'll be able to see it just being taken out of the ender pouch so we'll go for books first since they are right by here and we do have a lot I just want to see how they are sorted right so as you can see they're being taken out slowly now I think for the moment um, we're going to put the timer on a shorter pulse so that it takes the items out a bit quicker Ah, see that's what I was worried about right if you have all of these filled then the redstone tubing will be intelligent about where it puts items. Ah, it's not supposed to be doing that. Hmm. Okay, this is the filtering system. As you can see, each item it has a coloured block. Basically, that means uh, you can paint various pipes a different colour after a junction. And if something is meant to go to a various place like if you've got a green filter then it'll, you can use the same pipes to send it to two different locations one with one color filter one with a green filter and anything that is taken out using this filter with a green on it will go to the green painted end location but because um, these are all empty it's basically just going to treat it as the closest empty inventory so this one is likely to be used over and over again or it'll, you'll just end up with doubles all the way around so I think what we're going to do for now is take this out so it doesn't have a choice oh actually I don't need to do that what I'm going to do instead is make a cover now uh, with redstone tubing you can make a cover uh, well it's not necessarily for redstone tubing but it works well with it. Basically, if you put a cover in between uh, two pipes, and I'll show you what I mean now, it will prevent the blocks going in a direction you don't want them to go. So we'll just use stone because we've got a lot of that in the house, in the new house. So if you put the hacks, the handsaw above the block, you get slabs. Over again, you get panels, and again, and you get covers. Now covers are the thinnest and you get more of them and if you have more than you need all you need to do is craft them like that and you can 
just go all the way back up to the solid block again. So you could do this with diamond and if you decided you didn't want it again you could just put them all back together. Right, so we're going to go upstairs now and basically this panel, if we put it by there, as you can see it has separated the pipes. So now this is a one-way system. Items will only go in this direction and they'll just go into each em empty inventory until it's full. So now this means anything that goes into the pouch will just keep on going along here and just keep on going, keep on going until one of the barrels is full and it'll move on to the next one and so on. Right, so we want this going we'll put it on 750. That's fast enough. We don't want it any faster really because if you have too many um, pulses from devices like that going at the same time then you're just going to end up lagging your game. Right, let's just put all this in here. And as you know, because barrels will only store one object, one type of object, it doesn't matter which order the filter takes items out of the ender chest, because it'll only go into a valid inventory. Alright, so those are empty now. I think we're going to take all these out next. Well, there's a lot in here. Might have been easy just to break the barrel. Right, we could still do with that pulse being a bit faster, to be honest. And now we're going to go back to the house, and you can see that it is just going into one barrel for each new item until that barrel is full. So as you can see, it doesn't matter what order it's being taken out 34, 11, and it's all different items. And that's going to happen the whole time. Right, so I'm going to start just moving a lot of this stuff and it's going to take a while so I don't want to be recording for the moment because it's just going to be the same thing over and over again so I'll see you in a bit now we are finally done everything has been moved over from the old place that is just an empty shell now and the majority of these are full there's a couple of empty ones over here and that's because some of these barrels filled up to a stack and then the rest of the items moved on so i just had to take those out of the empty ones and put them into the uh, other barrels that had the same item in that only happens like if you have a, the first thing going in being a stack. If you did like half a stack and then a full stack being taken out by the filter, it would just keep on going and going into that first barrel. But because the first thing that came out of th through the filter was a full stack, it there's a little bit of a bug where it counts it as being full. But it's not really a problem, it's pretty easy to sort out. Now this is a bit messy, I will need to tidy it up later, just sort of put them in different barrels so that it's easier to find what you're looking for. But it's not too bad for the moment, just as a temporary thing. And down here we have our enchanting corner, it's a chest with all the enchanted books and inner armors I've found. And I've just got the lectern and the book stands in here because it's to do with books. Also, I found a maze breaker in a Twilight Forest age from Mist Br Mistcraft, which is brilliant because this generally you find it in Twilight Forest and it actually can break through the maze blocks which you can't really break through with other picks very easily. So, we've got a chest here for magic, chest here for armor weapons and records. I've got too many records. I've got a couple of copies I'm going to have to get rid of at some point later on. 
of course we've got the apiarist chest, apiarist's chest here, soul forge, computer, a couple of furnaces. This is generally just blocks and computer craft stuff. I've got the soil block, the Zycorium soil, which I'm going to make more of later. It's basically, you make an engineering block, you smelt green Zycorium to get this green Zycordite, and you, you put it in this recipe to make the engineering blocks, and then as uh, that recipe makes four blocks, you've got enough blocks for this, so then you just need any four saplings and an iron ingot, and you get your Zycorium soil. Basically, this acts as tilled farmland, so you can plant almost anything on it. You can't plant trees on it, you can't plant carrots or potatoes on it, but pretty much anything else you can plant on them, and they'll grow faster than if they were in watered soil. And if you stack more than one, so one on top of another on top of another, the one at the top, whatever you plant on that, will grow faster again. Uh, I think it goes up to about 16, but I haven't bothered with that. Uh, in here we've got just a couple of extra little bits and bobs and the red power stuff. Uh, all like metals and finished products pretty much in here. This is all the stuff you just find out in the wilderness. Although these two I should probably move into the magic -y one. because they are from Twilight Forest and somehow I managed to get a mossy comb out. Right, anyway, this is a craft packet stamper which if I just look for the recipe here it's pretty simple. Just a piston, three iron, cobble in the corners and a crafting table and you use that to make where is it? I think it may be in here. Use it to make diamond shards. Which basically, you have a diamond block in the center. I think it's diamond. And then you have TNT on the main four sides and obsidian in the corners. And it makes a craft packet. And you put that in the craft packet stamper and it makes those diamond shards, which you use for factorization. And if I can find... What am I looking for? Here we go. This Wrath Igniter, I'm going to show you how to use that in a bit to make a Wrath Lamp. Basically, basically a, a Wrath Lamp will produce a lot of light and it's used for something else as well, which I'll show you later. Project table here, alloy furnace, and then there's the blast furnace and the coke oven. I need to clear out a bit of space by these beds because I've already died once and I wasn't able to spawn. So I'm thinking this should be enough. And we'll just plonk down two torches. And we got Mistcraft over here. Our three ages, three linking books, two to the nether, one to the Twilight Forest, bookbinder here, and our writing desk with that's four, five, six, seven, eight full notebooks with 20 pages. Well, they're not full notebooks, I've just left them with 20 so then you don't have to scroll down the page to find the other pages. And we got that, so we got 8 on 20, that's 161 pages I've found in Minecraft ages. And out here I have set up the blaze spawner finally. I'll just kill this spider. I have used red alloy wire and some jacketed cable to uh, send a redstone signal to the um, blaze spawner. So when there is a redstone signal it will stop any spawns. Turn it off just for one lot of spawns. And as you can see there's water in here and it hurts the blazes and the water will push anything dropped by them down here and the occasional blaze but there's water here to kill those blazes that do fall down and you get blaze rods right now we're going to make the wrath lamp right so we need 
some dark iron, some silver, and some glass panes. Right, unfortunately, I think I lost my compressor. I'm going to have to have a look. It should be in here. No, not this one. This one. No, I moved it all into here, didn't I? Oh, no, we have a compressor. That's a relief. Ah, I have no power. Right, we'll get some redstone to power this. Right, we're going to need to put it somewhere... Oh, by the way, I have this ender chest down here, which is just the basic colour pattern. So it links with the one upstairs, so I don't have to go upstairs when I have things to put in there. But um, I think we'll take this corner for industrial craft stuff. Just clear that there, so then a glass fiber cable can connect under here. Right now we're going to go upstairs, get some redstone and some iron. Iron is here, and we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the thing with this wrath igniter is that the fire it produces can spread very fast. So you need to be very careful when using it. Right, we're looking for redstone. It's there. It is. That'll be enough. Nine. Now, uh, these industrial craft machines will take redstone as a temporary thing. I think. I could be wrong. Now. Let's have a look. Oh no, it does. So redstone can power these machines, but it's it's a waste of redstone. I'm only doing this now because I haven't got renewable power set up. I did have a generator for my industrial craft stuff later, but uh, earlier rather, but I had some aluminium, so I used it to make the water mills. Generator for aluminium makes water mills. And I'm going to use them later, and sort of make a big space so I can have a lot of them. So anyway, we need just one block of iron and I'll put these slabs away while they're not needed. Slabs can go in there. And just to be safe, we are going to go to the old base. As you can see, it's pretty much empty. Right, I'm going to make sure I get away from all this wood so I don't set anything on fire. I think we'll go down here. There's nothing down here that can be damaged then. And we'll just put that by there. And we'll light it and get well away. Now this uh, wrath igniter is for the most part used to make dark iron and wrath, ig wrath lamps. So you get an iron block and as soon as it changes colour you have your dark iron but it will set you on fire. And we've lost the block. Fantastic. That's because I broke it before the fire had gone and it just burned. Right, so we're going to have to get some more iron. I don't mind with the iron though, I've got plenty. It's just a waste of redstone. Oh, no, iron's down here, silly bugger. Right, so another nine iron. And I'm pretty sure one uh, dark iron block produces four dark iron. We'll find out now. Luckily this won't take too long just to make the one block. And we'll leave this redstone in here just in case we need to make something else. Right, block. Right, um, just make sure we've got some glass. No, we don't. Right, so I'll make some glass cook up now. There we go, spread it between the two. It's not going to be in there, not going to be in there. No, no glass panes, okay. Right, so we'll go back here. And 
we'll just do it in here, it doesn't really matter if it makes a mess. We'll just stand back. If it starts spreading, I'm going to have to make a runner. Do a runner, rather. But it should be okay. Alright, we'll wait until it stops. That's the other thing about this fire. When you make a fire with the Wrath Igniter, it will start prop of normal fires, which will spread very far. And if you set it on cobblestone, it'll change into smooth stone and it'll spread along until it's all done, and vice versa. If you do it on grass, it'll just go as quite far. It won't just keep on going and going because there's a, a size limit to it but it will change all of the grass blocks to just plain soil. But now we want to put this in here and yes we got four dark iron ingots. Right so we need was it three? No we need two silver ingots which we should have. That was lucky. And we'll get the glass out of here to make the glass panes. And uh, the recipe for Wrath Igniter does need, uh, the Wrath Lamp, sorry, does need a Wrath Igniter, but you'll get it back. It'll just basically take uh, the equivalent of one use from the durability. So silver top and bottom, and Wrath Igniter in the middle. And you get a Wrath Lamp. And the, the Igniter will just go back into... Let's put it in this one again. And we don't need the glass anymore. Okay, that's weird. Right, and now, this... Is that...? Yes, it's a creeper. This wrath lamp will just produce a massive amount of light. And you can take it with you. Now, as you can see, the whole of this area is now lit up. It only starts to get darker by here in this corner. It, it's ha it has a massive field where it will light up and you can put one wrath lamp in the center of a 20 block high room and it will light up the ground well enough to prevent anything from spawning. And you can pick it up and put it back down wherever you want using just a pick. Right, so I think that's it for this video. Got through everything I wanted to. So, thanks for watching, hope it was enjoyable, and I'll be back next time. Bye!